Welcome to session two. In this session, we are going to explain and apply theories of motivation in a leadership context. Motivation is an area of psychology that has gotten a great amount of attention because we all wish to be successful. The overall basic perception of motivation includes three basic forces, which are needs, behavior, and satisfaction. There has to be a need or want which changes your behavior, meaning that you act a certain way in order to satisfy your need or want. Some models reward between behavior and satisfaction. Part of what a theory of motivation tries to do is explaining and predicting who has which wants, which turns out to be extremely difficult. We will briefly cover Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It is a five-tier pyramid that we will cover from top to bottom. The categories on the pyramid are self-actualization, esteem needs, social needs, security needs, and physiological needs. The lower needs of the pyramid take priority. It does not make sense to worry about your looks when you do not have food to eat which is why basic needs take priority over all other needs. In order for a person to achieve self-actualization, they need to satisfy all other needs first. Self-actualization is a complete understanding of who you are, a sense of completeness of being the best person you could possibly be. Let us look at the theory called the ERG that classifies needs into three categories. The three categories are growth needs, relatedness needs, and existence needs. Aldo Fader, who discovered the ERG theory, found that one class of needs might remain stronger whether another class has been satisfied or not. According to Herzberg, there are two kinds of factors that affect motivation hygiene factors, and motivators. Hygiene factors are the things that people get dissatisfied if they are removed and act to get it back. An example of such factors are working conditions, working benefits, company policies, and interpersonal relationships. These are the intrinsic items which are at the bottom of both Maslow's and Aldefer's hierarchy. Motivators are the factors that bring motivation and their absence does not cause any particular dissatisfaction. An example of a motivating factor would be power. Power basically works by threatening to withhold hygiene factors. There are other theories that explain motivation differently, but all of them agree to the existence of intrinsic and extrinsic motivation. I believe that in order for you to understand the session better, you need to revise your learner guide and go through the topic in detail so that you can also see the sketches in detail. An idea is a great source of self-motivation and an ideal way to success. In order to generate ideas, you can follow a seven-step process which will help you brainstorm ideas much more easily. The first step, you set a goal where you will define what exactly you wish to achieve. This will help you know your direction and progress and act as a source of motivation. The second step is to generate ideas. Think of ways and methods you can follow to achieve the end you have set. The third step is where you filter your ideas from the list you made and remove the impractical ones. 
In the fourth step, you group similar ideas together based on characteristics. If some ideas are left with no groups, you can get rid of them. In the fifth step, you prepare an action plan. An action plan will keep you on track. And with your self-motivation skills, you can use it to motivate you till you achieve your goals. The sixth step is to list the challenges that you may face while executing the plan and also list the ways you are going to deal with them. This would again act as a source of self-motivation by acting as a stimulant and making you work harder and better. The last step is where you have to take action. Since you already have an action plan and you know how you will deal with the challenges, it will be easier to execute the plan. We have come to the end of our session. Let us take a break and continue in the next session.